Welcome to this conversation. I'm speaking with Karen Walling. And Karen, as I'm talking right now, interrupt me if I say something wrong. But so you became a patient of our office three years ago, and your diagnosis was uh, stage four endometrial cancer with metastasis and cachexia. So cachexia, for those who don't know, that means is basically the um, death cycle where you can eat a lot of food, but you still lose weight. Your body's falling apart. And people can get cachexia through cancer or they can get it even through heart attacks. And honestly, it's how most people die. Their death certificate would say um, death from heart disease or cancer, but the mechanism of that dying process is cachexia. And here you are three years later, you're, all the cancer is gone. You're back to a good state of health. And you, you live in Iowa, so you've been driving eight hours one way to Ann Arbor, and you're not my patient. You're Dr. Amanda <laughs> Childress's patient. And the first time we talked, the first time we met was, what, a week and a half ago? <laughs> Something like that. So I've, when, when you first became a patient, Dr. Amanda came to me, and she goes, I got this patient with cancer and Mets and cachexia. What do I do? And my answer to her was, well, you know, the famous doctors of the 1900s who would save people's lives, like they would show up at the deathbed and they'd give people their secret was raw animal food. So Dr. Mayo of the Mayo Clinic, he had the raw milk diet. Dr. Weston A. Price would use what's called June butter. When the cows eat grass in June, the grass is growing really fast. That butter was orange. He would have June butter plus cod liver oil combined and reversing horrible diseases and saving people's lives. Um, I did a video about this. I talked about a guy named Dr. Uh, he wasn't a doctor, but a Junus van der Plans. And um, there's also Dr. Budwig and she's using raw like uh, cottage cheese. So, so I told Dr. Amanda, like there's gotta be some kind of raw food that Karen can work with, raw liver, raw eggs, raw butter, raw something. And so you're, choice, your main choice would be raw eggs. So you started to eat 18 raw eggs per day. Is that correct? Um, at first, you started me on 12 okay. per day. And then I was still having quite a few issues. And so she probably talked with you again. And so she told me to do 24 eggs every other day. I mean, every third day. And on the other days, do at least 12. And ultimately what I was doing was doing um, 16 eggs on the other days and 24 on the every third day, because I, I had asked her, okay, do I have to do just straightforward raw eggs or can I mix it with something? Because I was watching weightlifter videos on YouTube where watching how they're gunking down raw eggs, like putting just a little lemon juice and then boom. And the idea of doing that with 24 eggs or even the 12 was like, okay, I, I'll do this if I have to, but I'd rather not. And I've got a good Vitamix mixer and all that. Anyway, she said, she checked with you and you said, yes, it was okay. But again, I got to keep the carbs. I was told, keep my carbs below five grams. So I created a concoction of um, the eggs, um, MCT oil, because I had been taking MCT oil for just kind of um, Alzheimer's prevention for a long time in my smoothies. So I thought it was just a good idea still. Um, coconut cream, some lemon juice, vanilla, some water, some ice, and I top it all with nutmeg in the end. So I made kind of an eggnog. And so I still take that every day. I'm doing a six egg version once a day right now, and then six raw, um, cooked eggs still. But at the peak, I was doing um, three eight egg smoothies a day. And then the other two days, I was doing two of the smoothies a day. This, this and then as much beef, although cooked, luckily nobody told me I had to do raw meat. Um, that would have been a toughie for me. Not that I couldn't maybe have done it, but the raw eggs were enough of a stretch. Um, but so I was eating um, at the peak, I was eating a pound of of beef a day, along with doing the smoothies. 
that's incredible. It's music to my ears. Puts a huge smile on my, on my face because it it makes sense. It and this may be a shocking for people to hear this, but you know if you understand uh, the role or the function of mitochondria, cellular function, and the nutrients that they need, and ketosis versus cachexia, also known as lactic acidosis. Everything that you're saying completely makes sense to reverse the worst, scariest diagnosis that anybody could possibly ever have. And so as you're, so you made the smoothie, you put in a, a, a Vitamix, you said, right? Yeah, for a while I was using a vacuum blender. Yeah. Um, just be, and, but I switched back to my Vitamix after a while, just because I would kind of wear out the vacuum blender pieces okay. after a while because doing that three times a day can be kind of rough on things yeah and the Vitamix was very well designed and I got the stainless steel container ultimately because also trying to avoid plastic and you know I'm sure Vitamix uses a nice plastic but again yeah. I was just trying to do everything I can because the when I first went to Michigan the first thing that um, Dr. Chill just worked on was actually not the cancer. It was, I had vinyl chloride in my kidneys. And so she had to get that taken care of so that then I'd be able to respond better. I mean, I did some other things cancer related, but the priority was getting my kidneys. Right, so let me say the, the disclaimer right now, we don't treat cancer. We don't treat any disease whatsoever. Oops. Right? And, and so, she, she made that clear okay. repeatedly. In the whole healthcare field, we understand the function of, of uh, the body, the organs, the cells, the tissues, and then we restore function. And in order to restore function, it does take two things. Number one, detox or get rid of the bad stuff. Number mm -hmm. two, put in the good things. Now, as I say this, this isn't just like me being like some kind of a lone wolf. This is literally the wording and the, and, and the, the appropriate terminology as prescribed as demanded by the FDA and the USDA. So when, when, when I go to a lecture by a nutritional supplement company, what they're supposed to do is talk about normal physiology. Let's pick a kit uh, organ, we'll say kidneys. So they talk about the normal physiology of the kidneys. And then you take a break and all the attendees are supposed to go out for 10 minutes and maybe forget about what you just learned. You come back in and now you have 10 minutes and they say, Here's this product and it supports normal physiology of the kidneys. And here's this product and here's this product. They support normal physiology of the kidneys. So it's actually kind of lame uh, because the, the talk about symptoms, disease states, you know, conditions, it's not really there compared to like a medical conference. But the truth is it's more powerful and it makes more sense. And for many years, I was really disappointed with what we were going through as an audience, you know, and adhering to what the FDA and USDA uh, demands that the uh, presenters speak on. But now um, I don't care because, because we got the gold, you know, we understand physiology and we restore it. In medicine, they're treating symptoms, they're squashing symptoms, and with cancer, they're killing cells, killing cancer cells. In the meantime, they're harming your body. So there's my, there's our disclaimer. We're not treating any disease, but we're feeding people with no matter what your diagnosis is from the hospital or the medical doctor, we're feeding your body. We're cleaning it up, restoring normal function. And um, what, what I'm saying there is, you know, that's gold right there compared to squashing symptoms. Okay. So she found uh, vinyl chloride in your kidney. So you started detoxing and, um, uh, let's talk a little bit more about other organ functions. So I know you had some liver issues, parasites, right? So go ahead and tell me about like the liver, for example. Well, I th when they did the CT scan, they also found damage to the liver as, as part of the scan. Um, you know, I don't know how that was, what was, how that was affecting me. I do know that at one point before I was even told I had cancer, I had somebody at work come to me and say, you know, you don't look good. You look yellow. Now, I didn't look like, you know, I didn't have yellow in my eyes. It's just my skin didn't look right to her. And it turned out ultimately she was right. Um, 
I had had a physical though, like that month and been told you're fine. Um, but, and again, I had had stage one cancer years ago and they took, did a hysterectomy, took out my ovaries and did some follow-up checks and you're cured, you know, you're, you're all good. And they really didn't do much follow-up. And later I learned there are blood tests that you can do that, you know, show these signs that, hey, you still have cancer. And it's, in my case, the same cancer. Um, I, besides the kidney problem from the vinyl chloride, which was probably because of me getting filtered water from the grocery store to try and be healthy, you know, hey, I'm, I'm protecting myself. But I realized later I was using a three gallon container that's um, got the, that code of three, which I found out later is awful. Um, so I was, you know, if I ever got the container in my car and sitting for a while, it would heat up and I was probably leaching the stuff and I'm drinking this. And so I was slowly poisoning myself by trying to be healthy. Yeah. So, um, what would, in your estimation with your experience, what was your favorite detox product? Just pick one, the most effective one that you experienced. Oh, well, that's a tough because I've I've been through lots of different ones. She's she's had me. the The one that stands out, I don't know if it did the most for me, but it it's memorable is the carboxy. Okay. Just because it's such a, a weird product to deal with, it was the yeah. black powder. On a lot of the supplements, it was just take it and trust. Yeah. Um, that it's and. And that's always been the interesting thing is going there and, you know, what I need keeps changing. Yeah. So talk about parasites. What did you experience with that? Well, it was, it, it, one, she didn't tell me much about the parasites or the Lyme disease that I also am dealing with um, initially, you know, because we had, it was like focus on the priorities. And then after a while, she did say, mention about the parasites and like, Ooh, you know, I mean, I had watched videos too with you talking about parasites and had learned that, you know, how most of us, if you're breathing, you have parasites. Um, so I've been on um, the cell core products like Para One, Para Three for quite a while and I'm cycling it. Um, and I have seen parasites come out of me, or at least what, you know, I haven't. Um, gone to the extreme of collecting them and bringing them in. I've just been ooh um, and happy it's going out. And and sometimes wondering if, you know, if I'm not feeling particularly well, if, you know, it might be the parasites not being happy with that I'm trying to get rid of them. I, you know, I don't know. Again, she tests me and, and sees that I'm making progress towards getting rid of these, just yeah. like I'm, getting, I'm making progress on the line. All right, and, so when you say test, though, let's stop right here. Okay. When you say test, you're saying muscle testing. Yes. Right, and now in the last three years, how many rounds of lab testing, like blood draws or urine sampling, have you done? It's varied over time, depending how sick I've been. Um, like right now, the last time I did was in April. Um, it was shortly before um, the next to last visit. Dr. Childress um, had me not continue doing as many lab tests because you know I was things were showing fairly reasonable and so I think she just didn't see the point of, of spending that much money on right. lab tests and just like let the muscle testing direct your your path yes right? yeah and I mean it's not just directing the path but it's also getting very specific with exactly what supplements and dosing that your body wanted at the time yeah. And um, just my brain, when you talk about tests too, at one point with the cholesterol, I was at 7-Eleven. Your total cholesterol, 7-Eleven? Yeah, 7-Eleven. And I think, um, I think Dr. Childress said that was the top she's seen for yeah. her patients. The liver gallbladder dysfunction, um, I know LDL cholesterol can be antiviral, so the body might bump up LDL to kill a virus, um, but it's probably more like the liver dysfunction. Let's talk about, um, I want to talk about when <clears throat> you got the MRI, the last MRI, which was what, in the fall of 21? It, it wasn't an MRI. I got a CT scan. 
Okay. And, and that it, was in August of, of 2021. And, it, and, it, and I it, had been told the cancer was gone before then. I just didn't rush out to contact my MD to see about a scan. I just waited until it was kind of a convenient time to bring it up with her and ask for the scan. And so they did it. Um, and I, the, the conversation was interesting because I kept digging in, trying to get the, you know, say, okay, is it a clear scan? Am I cancer free? All that. And it was like, they didn't want to say that. Um, and then finally said, well, okay, yeah, it, it is good. I, with the way it looked before versus the way it looks now, then yes, it must be that the cancer is gone. And I said, okay, will this take care of, you know, on my charts or whatever, that I will not be considered a stage four ready to die person. And, and she said, it starts the five-year clock. Okay. Um, how many months or years from exactly three years ago did it take for you to think that the cancer was gone? Did it take, was it a year, was it a year and a half or what? I, I have a look through my notes, um, but I'm just guessing probably like a year and a half. Um, okay. And then you just, and then who said that you're cancer free before the CT scan? I'm um, Dr. Childress saying that, you know, can, she, she won't at, say that, you know, hey, cancer's never going to bother you again. And, and my understanding, which right or wrong, is that we all have cancer in us. And it's just what state are we in? as to whether that starts becoming stronger. And, and so, right, you know, it's the shifting priorities. So the cancer is not an issue right now. Um, you know, my, the CT scan confirmed it, but it's also, we're, you know, the higher priorities right now are the parasites in the line. Okay. And, and it, you know, I, I, I kid her sometimes, can I, okay, can I start eating cake again? And she's like, no. Okay. 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 Now in the last three years, drugs, chemo, radiation, did you do anything conventional in the last three years? No. Okay. Now, Dr. It's, Amanda is a PharmD. She's a doctor in pharmacy. So at, at any point, were you considering drugs? Did you ask her advice about drugs? Did she offer anything about drugs? No, I don't think we ever discussed it because okay. I didn't see the point. Um, now, when I went to the oncologist, shortly after the first visit with Dr. Amanda. Um, the oncologist wanted me to do surgery in, almost immediately before I got too weak for the surgery and wanted to do two types of chemo. Um, and he at first didn't tell me I'm stage four. I had to ask him, okay, what stage am I? He also used the word palliative. Um, I think he, he was hoping I didn't actually know what that meant. And, you know, so I, I had to draw it out of him. Okay, will any of this save my life? And he's, no, it right. will make you more comfortable while you die, right. which I don't see how surgery and two types of chemo is going to make me comfortable. Not at all. So this is a picture of the viewpoint of an oncologist. They use drugs, chemo, surgery, radiation, and the results are horrible. Yes. And that's their life every day. You know, they, let's say they're working five days a week and they get the next patient in front of their face, the next patient, the next patient. And it's a horrible life to be the doctor that can only give drugs. And to picture any oncologist in the country saying to any cancer patient, okay, pick your raw animal food. Will it be liver, eggs, raw milk? Like what, what do you have an appetite for? Okay, so you're going to pick the raw eggs. Great, 12 a day go start now 12 a day like this doesn't fly it's not our culture he, he wouldn't even discuss about i didn't know about the raw eggs at the time but he wouldn't discuss about ketosis i i asked him some questions and he says well you know how do you even know you're you're in that state and i'm like i had a blood test and i was I think i was like 5.5 at the time um when i was in michigan um it, 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 so he, wait, wait, you mean your ketones were five? Your ketones were five point five. Yes. Right, which is incredibly, you know, deep ketosis is very good. Yeah. 
there were several things I asked him that he just said, not standard of care, not standard of care. Exactly. So he's, he's okay with telling me what we can offer you is going to kill you, you know, not save you. But the idea of like, I, I know that there are some oncologists who work with a patient in terms of like, you know, doing fasting before doing chemo, that kind of thing. This, this was not that kind of doctor. And I even asked him, um, like, are you aware of cancer being metabolic? And are you aware of Tom, Dr. Thomas Seafried's work? And he's like, I think I've heard the name. But so he was, I, again, I heard over and over again, not standard of care. Right. So let me, just for the audience, Dr. Thomas Seafried um, from, from Boston, the main guide now, reviving the work of Dr. Otto Warburg from 1929 through 1934, and, and later when Warburg figured out lactic acidosis and, uh, and cancer. And Warburg, throughout the mitochondrial uh, mechanism of producing ATP, producing energy, he figured out a few spots that were really important, but later other spots were also discovered. But the point is, Thomas Seyfried is just reviving ketosis and reviving the reversal of lactic acidosis and cachexia. And, there, and there's a book called um, How to Start Cancer. I'm a big fan of that. Dr. Thomas Seyfried's book is uh, Cancer, a Metabolic Disease. Um, and then there's a few... Um, there's uh, also Tripping Over the Truth with... Um, Travis Christopherson. Yes. So that's a fantastic book. Another book is I'm a huge fan of by Sam Apple about Otto Warburg, the Nazis and the cure for cancer uh, called Ravenous. Anyways, these are just, they all have the same vein, the same line of thinking. And we're going back to all the doctors, all the medical students in 1932 had these conversations that we're having right now. And then by 1961, it was all gone. And I picked that year for various historical reasons, but in the 70s and the 80s, what horrible decades for healthcare, <laughs> horrible, in the 90s too, but just in the late 90s and then into the 2000s, then people started talking about ketosis more. So we're opening up what we knew 90 years ago, and we're doing uh, what we sh now should have been doing this whole time without, you know, alterations, but... Anyways, Big Pharma has uh, played a huge role in creating the loss, you know, destroying the information that was, you know, well known before World War II and well used before World War II. So when people get cancer diagnosis and they get the scans, they get the blood tests, and then they reverse it with ketosis, I've had these patients say to me, well, I went back to the doctor and now I'm better, the scans are better, or they're gone or whatever. And the doctors say, oh, our diagnosis was incorrect at the time. And um, did your doctor say anything like that to you? Um, my MD, again, with the CT scan, tried to not respond that it's gone. I mean, she tried to find another excuse, but, but ultimately said, yes, it is gone. The first year I, I saw my normal um, MD that I've gone to for decades she she was you know I said okay am I supposed to be dead and she said yes and I tried to tell her what I was doing um and where I was going and she was seemed concerned that you were ripping me off that um taking advantage of a sick woman and um my thought was you know it had been a year at that time and I was still alive when I wasn't expected to be. So it was like, okay, um, I don't understand your thought. You know, how you thinking they're doing something, taking advantage of me when I'm still here and not supposed to be. The following year, it was um, that she didn't really want to know what I was doing. You know, basically, I'm happy you're still alive. You know, keep it up. But it wouldn't do me, her any good, her thought is that to know what I was doing because her patients wouldn't do it anyway. Most people would, she, she has enough trouble trying to get her type two diabetics to change their diet. So 
it it's easier for her to not know basically which i i would have thought you know what does it take you know what can i do for other people would be awesome you know but and the, and the reason why it's easy for her to not know is because of the license it's a when i say license i'm talking legal yes and for her to say to a patient okay ketosis and take some calcium supplements like that is so out of their license now she can get in trouble with her her board uh, her co-workers and associates can uh, make fun of her and say bad things about her and so she's got to stay totally in line sort of like yes and 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 if somebody asks well why if you're in iowa do you go all the way to michigan um i was considered a standard of care state and that means like naturopaths are illegal um you know, you can't practice here if you're a naturopath. In Iowa. Um, I tried looking around for somebody closer, um, but I, I just haven't had success. I might find somebody that says they do some alternative care, but it's like also along with the standard of care kind of thing. Um, so I go to Michigan because, you know, that's, I had to pick you know, at the time I was told stage four, I had, I, I'd read books about cancer and all the things you can do, but there's all these possible solutions. Right. And it was, how do I decide what's right for me? Right. And, and have the guidance. And I was looking it up the other day that, you know, like, when did I start watching your videos? Um, and I realized I, I bought good fat bars back in 2017. So I, the only way I knew about that was because of your videos. Yeah. And so I must have been watching videos that long. And before that, I thought about contacting your office and, you know, just finding what I could do to help my health. But the idea of a seven, eight hour drive, just saying it's like huge. Oh, that's just too much. But after told you're dying, it was like, okay, I think I can deal with eight hours you know, of driving and staying overnight and all of that to get help. Um, it just changes your perspective about life, you know, things like that. Yeah. So I just need to say a message to uh, all of our wonderful naturopaths who are watching the license. Okay. The licensing for chiropractors state by state pretty much includes, you know, food advice, dietary advice, but naturopathic, naturopathic licensing laws by state uh, very widely in Michigan, uh, there's no real like licensing for NDs, but there is what's called um, community standards. So if somebody were to do a survey house to house and say, what would a naturopathic doctor do in their practice? What would you consider to be a, a standard for them? And so the answer would be supplements, diet, right? Like that. So anyways, now we don't have any ND. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We have Dr. Taggy in our office. She's an ND. Um, so there's that. I just want to say that for the NDs. And unfortunately, in Iowa, th that's not the case. And if my oncologist was any sample, I, I just would have difficulty finding anybody that was open to alternative choices, even though, again, the standard of care was not going to bring me back to health. Right. Um, I also, at one point, um, was very sick and, and, and got to where I was feeling so bad near thanks, uh, Thanksgiving that I, w I actually went to an MD because I, would, I couldn't keep food down and all this. And um, this person actually said, have you tried you know, taking Gatorade? And I'm like, I'm, I've got cancer. I cannot have something like that. Oh, you got to keep your enzymes up. I think it was that she said. I basically got so mad and it did. And the same thing with the oncologist, I think in both cases, what helped me was that they were such jerks about everything that I knew not to listen to them about anything. Like with the, and that I talked to a friend about this, that we were actually fortunate at times when we had an MD that was not nice because if, if the MD had been kinder and, and said, you know, I'll help take care of you, it'll be okay, you know, just, 
you know, you'll just do these things and everything's going to, you know, maybe I would, I hopefully I would have known better, but maybe I would have listened, but this guy was no. And, and, and so it was actually a blessing because it, it made it clear. There is no other choice. You know, you just need to do this other route. Um, again, I don't know if like if they had said stage three and there's a chance we could save you. And if they were sweet, you know, I would hope I wouldn't have listened that I would have read enough to know, no, not good choice. Yeah. But again, it's, it's nice when you can just know that this is not the right thing to do. Right. Huh. Okay. And I, yeah. Okay. Thanks. So um, let me shift over to like you, when you and I have talked and texted, you were mentioning a, a variety of other therapies that you chose to do. So obviously the raw eggs and then the supplements for detoxing. And um, I'm assuming uh, other supplements for rehabilitating kidneys and liver. Yes. Right? So, so give me, I don't know, like maybe three more of your top favorite therapies that you did that you think helped you the most. Oh, besides the diet and the supplements? Well, um, yeah, I mean, it could be a particular supplement, but like, I know you did a bunch of other like things you plug into the wall and you use, you know, use that way. I was using the sauna, um, the Therisage sauna for a long time. And I still am. I do that just about every day. And in the beginning, I would actually see signs that I was getting things out because like I would, I would leave color. Like I, when I step out, I would leave colors on the towels. Um, just, and when I was especially sick, it, it, it was a way to help myself. And some of these things, um, again, I, I think it helped with the detox, but it also sometimes was helpful just having something that I could control myself. Yeah, and do for yourself. Yeah, what colors did you have coming out of your skin? Um, when I stepped out, it was kind of a rust color that would come out okay. and, and uh, we're on my feet. And then at times later, I would get where I sat, I would see black. All right, that's great. Not a huge amount, but you know, it was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, the other thing I had done previous to that was, um, I think we talked about a little bit that I had taken care of my teeth in 2017, which I think was also, from what I read, key in probably helping my health. Yeah. Right. What? So, give me, give us details. Like, what did you do for your teeth? Um, I I went to somebody that followed Hale Huggins protocol. And so got my root canals removed and got my cavitations cleaned out and all the mercury removed safely. So, you know, the rubber dam, the um, doing the, you know, where they do, do the oxygen, um, yeah. just making sure it's a safe condition. Oh, um, yeah. I did the follow-up with um, vitamin C IVs. I did hyperbaric oxygen at that time. So I, from what I've read, that probably also is part of help save me. So and, wait, let me let me stop you right there. Yeah. So that was in 2017, and then you became a patient in of our office in 2019, right? Yes. So in those two years, was your health improving or not? We're saying the in, same. I wouldn't say that. Like, I didn't have like a major health problem at that time that I knew of. You know, yes, in 2010, I had the stage one cancer, but it had been um, this progression that I, I wasn't really worried about the cancer at the time, foolishly, but, you know, they had said, got it all, everything's wonderful. So my concern at that time was um, I, I was worried about arthritis first because I was getting it in my hand and my MD and my chiropractor had said, well, you're just getting old. And that happens. And what I'd read said, no, that's inflammation. And so you need to take care of, you know, get rid of the grains and the sugars. So I was doing things for that and also concerned about Alzheimer's because I didn't, obviously didn't want Alzheimer's. And so I was changing my diet to help the arthritis, which had helped a great deal. I, I, I stopped having the problem in my hand and then so I was doing all these things to try and change how I ate. And so I was already 
doing um, like some fasting, um, often doing only one meal a day, um, doing a, lots of cooked eggs, you know, not anywhere near what I do now, but um, so I had changed my diet quite a bit, got rid of all the pop years ago. And it's likely that all of that was saving me along the way. And didn't, I didn't know it, that I was helping myself with the cancer. Um, and I was looking at my notes, I journal um, part of trying to help with sleep. I'd read before, you know, journal and kind of let things go. And it's, anyway, I was looking through that and reminding myself that I don't know if this is what kicked it off, but I had read somewhere that your friend mentioned that um, sourdough bread isn't such a bad bread, you know? So if you want to just like every now and then get out of ketosis and do something, you know, if you miss bread, go ahead and have some sourdough bread. So I had that, um, like I think it was the end of May in 2019. And two days after that, I started feeling horrible. And I was looking at my journal and I, I stayed feeling not great. And so I don't know if that's like, I was doing all these things and preventing the cancer from getting strong and holding it back. And then boom, I, I do this, you know, which I wouldn't think would be any big deal. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised at all that one dose of sourdough bread makes you, you know, would make you sick for a while. I knew a guy, um long story short that was the only bread that he had he had it very rarely but honest, honestly i think that's his the main contributor to his heart attack would be his bread even though it was like sourdough and the 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 mother uh what do you call that the the dough was like 100 years old whatever so bread is not our friend um even if it's organic and all that yeah and it was like very simple organic like four ingredients kind of bread you know and it was I had stopped the grains, not because I was, you know, seen as having gluten intolerance, although basically all are, but, you know, I just thought once in a while and boom, but again, maybe it was a blessing because it, it let me figure all this stuff out. Yeah. Was there a, another therapy that you, besides the sauna that you really liked? Um, I also do the Rife, um, okay. which... Um, when I, I, along my road, I got a bad bacteria, what I'm assuming is a bacterial infection that I just couldn't seem to shake. Um, and the rife made it so that I was able to sleep through the night again. Um, and so I've used that constantly ever since I got it for, for helping with the bacterial infection, helping with the um, Lyme, helping with the parasites. And um, Dr. Childress has been helpful with that and pointing out which rife to, to use. And I had brought it up with her because um, a friend had mentioned rife. And so an, anyway, it, it, it's another one of those things you don't know what it's doing for you, but- What's the name of your progress, rife? What's the name um, of it's, it? It's true rife. True rife, right. yeah, so that's what I have um, out of uh, what Battle Creek, Michigan. I, I do believe it's or Kalamazoo. not Kalamazoo, I think. Kalamazoo, yeah. So I just, I want to talk a little bit about Rife. Um, with the True Rife, TrueRife.com, there's programs in there, so you can just like pick a program, let it run. Some are ten minutes, some are six hours for like an overnight set, if you will. So when I had mold, I would turn on various overnight sets. And experiment with them and there was one program that helped me like i woke up in the morning and i actually felt better compared to all the other programs on my rife machine and the name of that program was called post heart attack recovery so that was from the mold you know affecting my heart what a disaster that was the other thing i want to say about rife is that royal rife's grandson or great-grandson he's on twitter uh, he's on tiktok and he's developing a Rife machine based on his grandfather's work. So that's exciting. And, and it doesn't, I don't want to discount any other uh, machines. You, you send a frequency through the air, it has an effect on biological tissue. And you can call it various names, whatever. Um, but, and you can go shopping for various machines. I've, I've had a few. 
Um, I, I like the True Rife brand for sure. And then I'm excited about what Mr. The, you know, Mr. Rife, I don't know his name, but I think he's only like in his 30s, maybe he's in his 40s, but whatever he comes up with, that's pretty exciting too. Yes, I, you know, it's another one of those things you don't know what it's doing for you, but it seems to, again, be helping. And I've experimented with different programs over time. The other thing I wanted to mention was about the ascites that I had yeah, too, yeah. because that was- Ascites uh, meaning, meaning fluid retention in the gut for the people who don't know, go ahead. Yes, and that was the first sign that I really had a problem. I mean, I, I had bloating and I looked pregnant, which I don't normally look pregnant. There are a lot of people you start spotting going, okay, you know, they're not pregnant, but they look that way. And so you start wondering, do you have ascites? But that was one of the first signs that um, about the cancer and had this, a CT scan that showed the fluid. And then they had to, I had to go get the fluid pumped out not a very pleasant experience, but they took five liters out of me the first time. And, and that was part of also the oncologist saying, you're not going to get that stopped without, you know, like doing the surgery. And I, I had to do it several times. And then it was, I had a big gap before I had to do it again. And, and that was also with the supplements, um, you know, getting that right. And when I read about ascites, a lot of it's, most people have it because of liver, but you can have it for all kinds of reasons. And I kept trying to look for what is the real underlying cause for it, you know, get a good explanation, but I really didn't get good information. Um, but it seems to be tied to the albumin. Um, Which is a protein. And uh, with, if you have like too much or too little um, protein in various compartments in your body, it can collect or disperse water. So it's a protein imbalance. It's, you know, basically um, chemical like molecules that need to be fixed up. Now in conventional medicine, there's this hyper focus on, on micro things like albumin. So yeah, so there's an albumin problem, you get ascites. Now what? Do you add or remove albumin? No, you fix the organs. So, and then how do you fix the organs? Well, you got to fix the cells. How do you fix the cells? You got to fix the mitochondria. And that's where the raw eggs come in. That's, you know, that's where ketosis and fasting comes in. And then, and when you look at uh, a, a cancer patient, any patient head to toe, it's one unit, right? I think, and I'm a, my, the, the first name of my practice was called Holistic Doctor. Now it's called the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And so I'm, a, I'm in love with that word holistic. And I kind of had that holistic thinking even when I was farming, you know, at the age of 12 or whatever. Um, and so, and I think in my, in my profession as a group, I don't think we're thinking holistic enough, you know, and we're like the most holistic doctors in the country. But again, the point is, you, somebody could trace the albumin problem and the ascites problem to the kidneys, uh, to uh, dehydration, to the liver, uh, maybe even adrenal fatigue or whatever, but if, even if that exists. But the point is, it's everything from head to toe. It's blood circulation, it's lymphatic circulation, it's weaknesses in the membranes. You know, we can go through, it's, you know, leaky gut, leaky gut would be part of that. So, but the, the, vi the very vital essentials are repairing mitochondria and ketosis and animal foods are, and then detoxification, those are the basis of repairing the whole body. And, and having that, of course, go away was- The ascites, yeah. Was, was great because the whole procedure, because initially I had the five liters and then it was like 10 days later or, um, that I had to get another like 4.8 liters taken off, you know, and then, but again, with Dr. Childress's help, it was that got more extended, more extended that, you know, I, they had even talked at one time that, oh, you know, a lot of, some people need a port put in so that you can just take care of it yourself. And that was, again, just something that was really good to know that I was healing by the fact that I was not getting the ascites anymore. Yeah, good. So let's, Let's wrap this up by, I'm going to ask this question. When you look back 
in the past 20 or 30 years or more, what led you to having stage four cancer? Was it diet? Was it toxicity? What do you think it was? My guess is, and of course, I don't know this for sure, is in 2009, I bought an acreage, um, a place for my daughter to have her horses. And I went to town with Roundup. I was, you know, I had put like, um, I had like a five gallon thing that you could put on your back. I couldn't have that much, but I'd put like three gallons in and doing the driveway, doing around fence posts. I was, you know, my place looked a lot better than it does now because I was getting rid of the weeds. But I think it was, you know, again, I bought it in 2009. By 2010, I had cancer. They're not raising this as, you know, they talk about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma being because of the Roundup. But I'm just guessing that that's part of it too, is the, you know, it can cause other cancers. Yeah. And um, there's part of me, my detox too, is working on that glyphosate. Right. So when I've run chemical urine tests, every single person has Roundup, including myself, in very high amounts. But let me ask you about the infections. You used the word cavitations earlier in your jaw. That's an infection. So it's a tough question, but what do you think that had a role in regarding your cancer for you? It, it definitely could. And the fact that I had the mercury all those years too, you know, there. Obviously I had my wisdom ta teeth taken out, you know, so many years before. And if I, if I was looking at my notes again, that um, they had done bacterial tests and they found lots of different bacteria in those cavitations. They also, where they had re removed the root canal teeth, they said that I had no bone that separated um, from my sinuses too. So, um, you probably know better than I do what that means. Well, it means that it was infected and the bone eroded away, possibly. Because that's what bacteria do. They melt things. They can uh, create enzymes and chemicals that make tissue. I just did another video about this, how bacteria can liquefy tissue. All right, let me ask you another question. This is a hypothetical. It's also very difficult. Let's say... It, three years ago, you started using the raw egg uh, smoothie, and that's the only thing you did. No supplements. What do you think? Where do you think you'd be now if you just did the raw eggs? I think it would probably, again, this is just me guessing. I would think it would have kept me alive and kept me going. But I think the detox is, is a very important part of this, that doing the supplements to get my organs working better. Um, that, you know, again, it would have hopefully taken care of the cachexia, but I had other things going on that I needed to address. Yeah, so I think that supplements speed up healing for sure. And um, detox, um, ketosis is the foundation of detoxification. So when you add in the detox products, it'll speed up detox by I think 50 X that that's the number I come up with in my head <laughs> with all the, you know, now it's been a couple decades of me being in this, in this profession. Okay, cool. Any other last remaining things you want to share? Um, just, I guess that it's a process that, um, you know, it, it, just like going to a doctor, there shouldn't be like this magic pill. This is not magic that um, it's, you know, ups and downs, um, but seeing progress and just keeping with it and knowing that, you know, like, again, being cancer free does not mean I get to just suddenly eat whatever I want. It's um, still working on my health. And also, if I go back to my original lifestyle, I'm just going to have those problems again. Um, so, and you know, again, the raw eggs, I only have the only person that's been willing so far to try it. The smoothie is Dr. Childress. She actually drank it and said, yeah, that's not bad. And it really isn't. I'll I'd rather do it than chemo anytime. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. It's better than chemo anytime is what he said. 
Yes. Yeah. I'll put the recipe below and under the video in the video description box. I want to share, like, even if somebody chooses to get chemo radiation um, surgery, fine. You know, it's between you and your doctor. You need to be an educated person. It's a free market. You don't have to do anything. But let's say you do the standard of care. Then what? You still have an environment in your body that's growing cancer. It's it's an environment. You got to change that environment back to where your organs are vital. You re, you're returning life to your body because or parasites, bacteria, you know, they eat away at dead, they, they can cause dead tissue, and then they eat it. The toxins are killing tissue. Um, lack of ketosis actually is, is harmful in my opinion. So, and now I had, a, I had a patient last year, he was diagnosed with a lung cancer. He had ascites, he had cachexia, and he only lived about two more months after that. But I bring this up because he had lung issues for six years. And that was his original cancer was the lungs. He was misdiagnosed the whole time. They kept giving him some other weird diagnoses that were incorrect. Finally, he got the final um, correct diagnosis and it was just too late. But six years ago, he should have done the things that we do. He should have looked at his diet, getting rid of parasites, detoxing. And then now I have a, another patient currently with me now for oh maybe a year, year and a half. And she's had spots in her lungs showing up on CT scans now for 10 years. And they keep saying, well, we'll have to monitor it. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, um, and they keep giving her all these names, but they've never really nailed down a diagnosis. Well, it was parasites and she's been pooping out parasites in quantities. And they did a scan and her lungs were completely clean. And they set this up. They had her come in. They put her into a room. They, they had a consultation with her and said, look at your scan, look how good it is. You're, you're cancer-free if it was cancer in the first place. And everybody's happy. So they leave the room and they lined up everybody from the clinic, all the staff, front desk, reception, all the doctors, all the nurses were lined down this hallway. And it's like, she, now she's walking down this hall and everybody's clapping for her. And it's like, you know, hey, it was parasites the whole time, <laughs> you know, like get, get with the program. Mother nature is, you got to work with mother nature, right? Like that's the program. And you got to know the ins and outs and all the rules. And some of the organisms are trying to kill us and we have to kill them first, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's the way it goes. That's just, there's no other way around it. Okay. There's my, <laughs> it, it sounded like they took that as a win for themselves. Yeah. When they really had nothing to do with fixing her. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I, that's, that's been my career. I've had people where their diagnosis is reversed. I had a woman once, her, she brought her daughter in. The daughter was born with a half a brain, literally. And uh, she couldn't crawl. And she was like six years old. She couldn't walk. Of course, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't sit up on her own. But the, she was going to physical therapy. And they're trying to get her to crawl. Well, I gave her supplements for her brain, for her pituitary. And within a few months, now she's literally standing up on her own and walking. And they did a newspaper article. This is back when newspapers were actually a thing. And they, they were saying how great the nurses are. And even the school bus driver has a magical aura around them. And it's like, no, this was a pill. And the pill had pituitary in it and they consumed it and it fixed her pituitary. Now she's walking. But anyways, I'm used to that. I'm used to not having the, um, <laughs> the correct, correctly assigned cause, right? Like it's, I gave somebody a supplement that was based on nutrition and now they're better or they change your diet. And then the medical profession takes, um, takes ownership of the reversal of the, of the disease condition, but whatever. And in my case, too, the fact that I had the stage four identified more than five years after I had had the stage one and they had treated me, I was listed as a success, right? On their, I'm sure. This past five years, so yeah. Yes. And even though all they did was just push me down the road. And I guess that's another thing I want to mention is just if I could do it over again, I would never have had the operation in the first place. Yeah. Because that was not taking, you know, 
just removing body parts does not fix the underlying condition. Right, for sure. One of the tricks that oncology does to try to improve their st statistics is early diagnosis. So if you get a diagnosis of cancer in 2010, and then you live five years, and then on the, on the first day after the five years is up, you're dead, you're cured, right? But if you get the same diagnosis 2010, or let's say 2011, and you die on the same day, you're not a cure. So they have, they, they're pushing for early diagnosis, early screening, keep getting, you know, anyways. Okay, good. So let's end off here. This is fantastic. I'm so thankful for you to come and do this interview. And thanks for being a patient and your dedication, your knowledge. It does help that you're, you're an engineer, right? Yes. And you think logically, right? And you think in systems and people who think that way do better as opposed to emotions, right? And this it's can be a very emotional, absolutely emotional time in your life, right? But when you're, when you're trying to reverse, when you're trying to improve your health, you gotta set those emotions aside and think logically, right? Get, get in the program, take the supplements, change the diet, and you have your moments of emotion, but keep that aside while you're thinking logically to, to get health back, right? If the fact that there was a plan then and that you know your your clinic was able to help keep revising that plan and keep moving for things forward yeah. that you know it it just gave me a focus um it was obviously nice to have somebody guiding me on what was right for me because this is not going to be right for everybody yeah okay good all right thanks thank Karen. you Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Have a good day.